Okay, so Nikon is uh, smoking crack again. Hey, Nikon. Oh, hooray to smoking crack at Nikon. Um, check out the link below on the blog post. I've got some details on the uh, new Nikkor lens. There will be two lenses announced tonight. Um, one of them is going to be the... I, I've, I've said for since forever that the Nikon VR1 and VR2 were bum lenses. Um, the VR2 70-200 2.8 at uh, $2,500. Bum lens. The Tamron is better lens um, for a lot less money. Money being aside, the the Nikkor 7200 2.8 VR1 and VR2 were no bueno. Um, Nikon's going to be correcting that. The only unfortunate thing is that they're going to be delving into the realm that uh, Canon has been into for quite some time. Um, but this will be Nikon's first foray <laughs> into large element. Now Nikon has had smaller element fluorides, but not you can't use it for a front element. It's just too damn soft. And also, uh, its propensity towards uh, extreme temperature fluctuations can cause it to crack. Uh, kind of like taking something really, really hot and sticking it in something really cold. It'll just crack and split. So it's not for front element, but there will be larger elements in this. $3,200. could be $3,100 to $3,200. Now, part of the reason for that, so you got $700 disparity in price. Um, it will have faster autofocus and it will be a lighter weight lens. People will love the fact, oh, it's so much lighter weight. Fluorite, uh, for example, you can check my uh, blog post below where I give some of the details on that. Um, it's right about 15% lighter. The only problem is there's some downsides to fluorite. Um, Canon users, I could tell you this, on larger element lens that have secondary fluorite elements. It takes a long time to actually process those. You actually can't fast polish them like regular glass. The amazing part is, this is the really funny crap, is that Nikon, not too long ago, was talking crap, and rightfully so. Nikon was talking crap about fluorite. But now their premier lens is going to be $3,200 is going to have fluorite. Ain't that funny. Now this is Nikon themselves speaking. <clears throat> well, the optical properties of this new, new glass, ED glass, reflect those of uh, fluorite. Super ED glass is more resilient to rapid temperature changes, thermal shock, and is not susceptible to... This is Nikon talking. Uh, not susceptible to cracking. <coughs> as the crystal structure of fluoride is. See, now this is Nikon crap-talking fluorite a few years ago. But now they're going to have uh, at least two large elements inside this new very expensive lens that are going to be synthetic fluoride. Ain't that funny. Nikon's new lens is going to have large fluoride elements in it, but here I am quoting Nikon about the serious downsides to fluoride. Super ED glass also boasts a higher refractive index than fluoride, making it highly capable of correcting aberrations other than chromatic aberrations. So there's Nikon crap talking fluoride, but Nikon's new lens, <coughs> the 70 to 200 2.8 EFL, FL stands for fluoride, not fluoride, fluoride. The, the ED, remember those little purple crystals that you used to get at the rock shows? That was fluorite. It comes in like every color in the rainbow. Um, it's not the fluorite itself, it's the minerals that are actually causing uh, it to have those different colors, but those were fluorite crystals. Um, the ED, the EFL ED VR, okay, extra dispersion, VR, it's going to have fluoride in there. So it will be a lighter weight lens, it will be faster. And in uh, defense of Nikon, uh, grinding out and polishing fluorite and coating it is a super pain in the crotch. That's why those lenses generally are 15% more. However, it's not that much radically more expensive. I mean, technically, what they should charge for it is maybe like another two or three hundred dollars, and not seven hundred dollars. So they're really charging three times more than what they should relative to the production costs and manufacture of uh, making a large of fluorite uh, elements in the new 70 to 200. Um, this is also the reason why Canon never went to the space station. Um, the reason for that is that uh, they uh, NASA rejected fluorite because it would crack and explode under the stresses of rocketing the vibrations into space. That's why there's no uh, Canon glass up in space. You think it's just because a deal of Nikon made with NASA, but no, that's not the case. It's that fluorite 
which has uh, been one of Cannon's mainstays, uh, cannot withstand the vibration. Fluoride is very fragile to temperature changes and can crack if transitioning between extreme hot and cold environments. Fluorite is very brittle and it has perfect uh, th uh, cleavage on three different planes. Um, fluorite materials have the refractive indices that vary with temperature and that's always the interesting part. In other words, if you're going to go out and take pictures in extreme hot or extreme cold, the refractive index, this is what people are going to bitch about. If anybody goes out in extreme heat or extreme cold with this new lens that Nikon's coming out with, Unless it is uh, properly thermally insulated, and what they're going to do is they're probably going to have a, a special chamber inside the lens that is going to be vacuum sealed or sealed with argon, quite probably. That's also probably part of the cost. That keeps down the temperature fluctuations. These fast lenses are made to focus past infinity because the refractive indices change with temperature. Um, you drop a fluorite lens, you might as well go, forget about it, baby. This is a, definitely a lens that if you buy it, you better damn well insure it. You damn well better insure it. Uh, fluorite does have some advantages, obviously, for reasons it's you, you being used. It's got uh, zero scattering through the elements, basically. It's got very low dispersion. It's very lightweight. It's got exceptional color correction down to 400 uh, nanometers. Uh, the Germans even discovered... Uh, uh, the usefulness of using fluoride in a microscope. Back then they didn't have synthetic fluoride, but they could make little tiny pieces of clear fluoride for microscope objectives back in the 1800s. Excellent correction for chromatic aberration. Like I said, it's lightweight. So, <clears throat> right now I'm going to make a prediction that we're gonna, that's going to come 100% true. Right now on the news of this, Tamron's already known this for a few months now, Tamron is going to have naked uh, jello party shooters. They're going to have like naked twister and tequila shooters because Tamron is go <laughs> Tamron is so happy that Nikon's uh, new 70 to 200 is in uh, priced into outer space. Far more than it should be, even though the fluoride is much harder to work with, much harder to polish, and it's a pain in the crotch, which you know adds to its expense in the, uh, the synthetic uh, fluorite uh, grinding and polishing which is very slow you can't rush it so that creates a time issue which creates a, a workflow issue for creating excessive amounts of normal lenses relative to glass lenses which can be rapidly polished and just spit out like cookie cutters so that's part of the expense you know t something takes longer it's more of a pain in the crotch to build it's obviously more expensive but Tamron right now is going to have naked twister parties over this news. Tamron right now at their headquarters is going, woohoo! They are going to sell the bejesus out of 70 to 200. The Tamron's already was, uh, which I've got a couple of, the 70 to 200 2.8 VC, was already for uh, $900 less, almost twice as good of a lens as the, uh, as the, uh, the uh, Nikkor. 70 to 200 2.8 VR2. So, way to go, Nikon, uh, for shafting your customers. N uh, Tamron is really happy. Now, I said in defense of Nikon, this lens is more expensive to make. They also decided to come out with a really ridiculously expensive. You know, you could write this off on your taxes. It's a perspective controlled lens, it's a 19 millimeter f4 uh, tilt shift for four. It's going to be a little bitty lens. Tilt shift for four thousand bucks, but that is for architectural work. I mean, that is a tax write-off. When a lens like that is super expensive, nobody gives a damn because it's a tax write-off. So that doesn't matter. However, the seventy to two hundred two point eight is a working photographer's lens. Not that the tilt shift lens is not also going to be working photog. We're talking about most working photographers here are going to be wanting the seventy to two hundred two point eight. And then they're going to go, hmm, three thousand two hundred dollars. It's going to be a few ounces lighter. It's going to be a wee bit faster, and it's going to have basically no focus breathing. So for half the money. I could get something that is just a wee tiny bit slower, a wee tiny bit heavier. I'm going to get the Tamron 70 to 200 2.8 VC. And that is why Tamron right now is having naked twister parties over this news from Nikon. Nikon! Nikon. <laughs> and when people wake up and realize the price of the new 70 to 200, they're going to be like George Takei. They're going to go, oh my, oh my. <laughs> ah, Nikon screwed the pooch on this one. 
<clears throat> Nikon is following in Canon's footsteps, which is fine. The only problem is that Nikon has not been dealing up until now with large diameter fluoride elements. And uh, anytime some company like delves or toes into something they haven't been doing before, even if another company's been doing it for decades, they usually fail the first time out. So I suspect, highly suspect, that this new lens will have some serious issues. And then people will go, oh my god, I just spent $3,200 on a lens that doesn't work right. And that will piss people off at Nikon. Uh, towards Nikon, excuse me. So, yeah, $3,200. The only thing you're getting for $3,200, girlfriend, is a lens that is a wee tiny bit lighter and a wee tiny bit faster. With no focus breathing, or nearly no focus breathing. If you think that is worth $1,500 more, I suggest you might be smoking crack. 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 I don't know what you're smoking. You're smoking something illegal smuggled over by uh, Colombian drug lords in cardboard submarines up the Baja Peninsula uh, on the backs of mules. <laughs> you're smoking something. <laughs> Nikon! Oh my.